Hey guys, I'm MoneyJ2K with GTO Wizard, and today I'll be going over one of my own hands from 500 NL. This hand taught me an important principle regarding blockers and triple barrel situations, so let's get into it. So as always, I'll replay the hand and then analyze the strategy afterwards. This hand starts off with the small blind opening to $15, and I'm on the big blind with ace four spades. This hand will mix between calling and three betting, and this time I choose to put in the three bet. Small blind calls. Flop comes king five two two tone. In the hand, I was thinking that this board we would be betting at a very high frequency, somewhere around 80% or so, and that my hand would probably be betting at a pretty high frequency itself as well with the gut shot. I bet small. He calls. Turn is the jack of clubs. In the hand, I was thinking that spades were a good combo to barrel here because when the diamond draws and the club draws miss, I will still have some really good barrel offs here that that aren't blocking any of his missed draws. As well as this specific hand, I was thinking in the, in the hand that the gut shot will give me that little bit of extra equity that will push it into more, into more of the bluffing kind of hands and less of the check back the ace highs. Um, and so in the hand, I bet about roughly two thirds, a little bit more than that, 75% of pot. He calls. River is the two of clubs. He checks. And so here I'm mainly thinking that a lot of his club draws were either raising the flop, folding pre, or blocked by the king and the jack on the board. Now, obviously, I would prefer to have the ace of clubs here, but. I don't think we're only going to be barreling off the ace of clubs here. I think in general, this is a really good board for us and we're gonna have a lot of two pairs. We're gonna have a lot, we're gonna have both all the sets, I think. And we're going to have some two X as well on the river. And so I put in the bluff jam, I get snap called by King Queen. And so this specific hand, I wasn't quite sure on what my bluff combos were on the river. I don't think I knew in the hand that I wouldn't want just to bluff club blockers. There's going to be other spades and there's going to be some just random hands in there that are just just have no showdown value and beat nothing and therefore are make up for some really good bluffs. I was thinking we'd be betting this river at a reasonable frequency, like 60% maybe, but I didn't love after the hand that my hand selection in general I thought I might have been getting a little bit out of line and over bluffing, so I went ahead and double checked it. So now that we're in GTO Wizard, we can start analyzing where some of my mistakes were made and maybe my misconceptions in the hand. And so my first misconception in the hand was I overestimated the range advantage that I had. I was thinking king high boards are really good for us. And while I think that is true as in general sense, the five and the two on the board gives him a lot of two pairs and some sets that I won't have. And then he also, because this is specifically blind versus blind, he still has a lot of these king four, king five, king six, king seven combos that in almost any other three bet spot he wouldn't have. And in all honesty, I haven't really studied small blind versus big blind three bet pots nearly enough and realizing this little extra king x that he has as well as these king 10 off combos and king jack off combos really pushes the equity much closer together and that's proven here by 50 percent to 50 percent equity so really neither player has a equity advantage here now we have slightly more of the top end hands and slightly more of the good hands and then he has some of these weaker hands a little bit more often and then we have more trash hands but in general if we just look at the equity graph we can really see it's pretty even throughout the entire graph. It's everything is, is pretty equal. And I would not have thought this. I would have thought we had a slight advantage across most of the range. And this a lot, like I said, has to do with him having fives, him having five or him having twos, him having king five, and just him having more king X than I was thinking in the hand. So it's really important to be able to correctly visualize the ranges that we're going into the flop here. And that is where some of my original misconceptions were had. And so when we hop over to the strategy, we can see he's got a small donking range here. And that just goes right back to the amount of equity he has and that we're checking back. Um, we're going to be checking back roughly 50% of the time, 40% of the time. And 
we so so he has somewhat of an incentive to donk but it's going to be pretty rare and i don't think population in at 500 is going to be donking this board probably ever and so he checks and as we hop into our c betting strategy we can see it's pretty mixed all across the board we're betting overall 60 percent of the time in the hand i probably would have guessed 70 to 80 percent which may not be a very big difference overall but i definitely misunderstood how often i'd be betting ace four i would have thought that it was probably betting almost pure or at least 70 percent 80 percent of the time and that's just a simple i have a gut shot solvers really like gut shots i'm just gonna bet and sometimes when you're in the hand you don't really get a lot of the time to calculate exactly the ranges and everything like that and you make some split decisions that may not always be correct and while this is a small discrepancy you know the ev difference is going to be extremely small but it's an important thing to make sure that your overall frequencies in your head are moving in the right direction and not the wrong direction obviously and so either way my sizing was pretty much correct using a really small size for at a relatively high frequency, around 60% bet. So we go ahead and put in the small size. And now he's definitely has this pretty robust raising range here. And that just goes back to the equities being very close on this board. And a lot of his raises come from these flush draws. If we go filter by the flush draws, we can see that a lot of these hands are mixed raises at pretty high frequencies as well, especially the ASX, um, low low nut flush draws, and the highest uh, King, King X also are raising a lot. And so it's a good question in the hand how often he will actually be raising, and will he be raising enough King X as well? And which would, if he wasn't raising enough, we would probably just bet more and more as the in position player, as the big blind. And that is an important exploit that we can use. Now, in the hand, I am playing anonymous tables because I'm playing on ignition. I don't really have a read on this player, so we're going to be trying to play as close to GTO as possible. And it's just important to note that he needs to be finding some raises that may not always be super intuitive. Hands like 5-4, you know, maybe 7-6. Some people won't do 8-6. Maybe people won't be using especially you know, 8-6 of clubs and whatnot. And like uh, the, the a lot of these just like backdoor flush draws and nut flush draws and are just raising at frequencies and it's going to be important as the small blind to actually raise a lot of these hands. As we can see, almost every hand has some frequency of mixed raises. But anyways, he calls and we see a turn. Turn was jack of club. And on the turn, he checks range. The turn is going to be pretty good for us, I believe. And we can see as the as while the equities come very close, this is less important on the turn. And this is much more important where we have this really large nut advantage now. We have almost double the the or a little bit over double the best hands. And as you go farther and farther in the in into the hand, the top end advantage becomes more and more important because a lot of the lowest end hands are simply just going to fold to bets. And they're not going to be able to realize their equity anyways. So that amount of equity is important, but it doesn't, it isn't always the defining part of your strategy. A lot of these top end hands that we have are going to be much more important. And so when we hop over to the strategies, we can see that we're again, betting roughly 60% of the time, betting pure with all of our best hands here, especially these um, highest King X. Betting a mix between 60% and this overbet size, which in the hand, I don't think I would have been using the overbet size. I think I would have probably simplified here to about the size that I used. That was around 75%. And in the hand, I think I was playing the turn in the overall frequencies pretty close. We can see a lot of the checks come from these pocket pairs that are it's fairly intuitive. A lot have come from these Jack X hands, these lowest Jack X. And then a lot of checks are just coming from like lower end King X as well in some of these like 5x hands like the the nut 5x hands like ace 5 and so the issue that i had in the hand was that ace 4 of spades basically never uses this uh 60 size and a very low frequency uses this overbet size but it's basically pure checking 
And I thought about this a lot in trying to understand why ace four is, is checking. And hands like queen four of spades are pure betting. Hands like if we just go to the filters and filter for spade combos, we can see all of these low in spade combos here are betting really high frequencies, even though they're just worse than ace four. This is basically my my best guess is that the ace of spades has a lot of very negative blockers. So when we put in the 60% size and we go back to the same filter, the spades filter, we can see that the ace of spade, the ace of spade blocks a lot of these nut um these these highest spade draws basically that the it were draws to these gut shots that were calling the flop but they're not going to be calling the turn bets. And so this ace, the ace of spades is just blocking all of these. And this is fairly significant. This is a lot of combos. You can see the ace 10 as well, the ace nine as well. The, this is blocking a lot of the folding range. And so that basically just means when we have the ace of spades, we get called more because we're blocking his folding range and the ace of spades isn't really blocking a lot of his calling range. It's only blocking the ace jack off combos and the ace jack um ace jack spades combos and the ace queen off combos but this is this is less i think of a factor overall than all of this folding range being blocked and then as we go back down we can also just see that the equity difference for these hands this um this ace four of spades has 21 percent equity which is pretty small it's very low but when we go down here and we look at like queen four of spades that was betting a very high frequency it's only nine percent equity and we basically what this is telling us is that we just have a lot of bad hands and we have a lot of hands that have a high incentive to bluff because when you when your hand only has nine percent equity it anything that folds to it is extremely good for that hand and so we are going to have a high incentive to bet these lower end um spade hands and the ace four is going to have a little bit higher incentive to check instead of the queen four the, the queen fours, the queen threes, and the, you know, the ten threes. And we can see the spade and the heart combos are very similar in strategies as well. And so this is a pretty important uh, misconception I think I had in the hand. And this is where I lose, I definitely lose a small amount of EV here. The issue with this, with this hand is that I'm probably, it's not just ace four. I'm probably betting, you know, I'm probably betting too much maybe with with 10 eight of spades, I'm doing it too much, or I'm just choosing some hands that maybe I'm probably just over bluffing in general, which is going to be pretty bad for my overall range where maybe this, let's see what the EV difference was. Maybe it's, it's only 0.5 of a big blind, 0.6 of a big blind difference of EV here. The issue is that might be 0 0.5, 0 0.6 big blinds of EV difference across a ton of different combos, which overall my bet frequency, maybe my bet frequency is supposed to be 60%, but it, I push it up to 70 or 80% just because I'm bluffing too much. And there I'm losing pretty significant EVs simply because of the misconceptions that I've already talked about previously. But anyways, I put in the 60% bet and he calls. We can see he's raising again. He's raising a fairly high frequency again for the turn. He's raising about 10% of the time overall. A lot of these raises are just coming from he has some two pairs now. He, he turns some king jack hands. He has king five. King 10 is starting to become a little bit more vulnerable on a double flush draw board. And there's just a general amount of hands that are going to want some protection, like specifically these king 10 hands, these king queen hands and whatnot. They basically are going to have a lot of rivers that they're not going to be able to get the money in anyways he calls river comes the two of clubs and we can see on this river he does have a pretty low frequency donk and i think this just comes around to he has some of these lower nut flushes and whatnot we go back to the ranges we are still at a pretty huge advantage overall but we are still we are still checking 53% of the time. So there are a, a, a small subset of hands in the small blinds range that are going to want to bet because we're going to be checking back a good chunk of hands. But overall, again, equities are going to come very close here, but we have a pretty large advantage, especially after he doesn't donk. We have a very large um, top end advantage here.
So when we go over to the strategy, we can see we are jamming only, we, the only size we're using are jamming. And that's probably one of the reasons that our check frequency is higher because we're using a larger size. But overall, we can see some of my ideas in the hand were correct. We are jamming some of these spade X hands, like these, these double spade hands that are, we do end up jamming a lot of these. The problem is, is because it's blind versus blind, we have a ton of just total air. We just have a ton of air. And if we start jamming these ace four of spades hands, we can see it when we do get here with ace four of spades, it just never jams. And it's actually a pretty big EV difference. Checking is 4.92, whereas jamming is 3.61. So we're losing you know, about 1.3 of a big blind here, which is pretty significant if you run that out over a hundred hands or a thousand hands or however many hands you want. It's just, it just compounds itself over and over and over. And so ace four of spades, really doesn't need to pluff here just because we have so many of these other basically just total airy hands and even some of these low five like these 5x hands oh these 5x hands are just flushes but even some of like eight four hands and ten four and ten three and whatnot they're they're jamming these spade combos quite frequently and if we just go back and filter by the spade the the double spade combos we can see just a lot of the lowest end spade combos are just bluff jamming the river so I don't think I was that far off in my I, in my uh, overall strategy on the river. I don't think I I had some very slight misconceptions, which definitely resulted in sizable EV differences. But one of the main things I wanted to actually bring up in this hand was at first glance, I think that Ace Four you can just say, oh, it's a big blind of of EV loss. That's bad, I'll try not to do that again. And then you end the analysis at that point and you don't go any deeper into the solve. You don't try to understand, okay, well, why is ace four a bad hand to barrel here? Why should I, I have checked the turn? Why, what, you, don't, you just don't dig deeper. And this is one of the biggest issues with the whole movement into learning GTO and learning theoretical poker is that a lot of people just see this and they just use it as an answer key. They take their hands, they put it in to their solver or to GTO wizard and whatnot, and they just look at it and they go, oh, ace four was supposed to check. Dang it, I messed up. I'll try to do it better next time. And then they close GTO wizard and they go play again. And they aren't trying to dig deeper into the intricacies of, okay, well, why are we checking this high of a frequency on the flop? Are you actually doing that? Or, or how are you playing all these other hands? Are you, if maybe you're, you're checking or you're, you're betting ace four, but that's a small EV difference and you're okay, but maybe you're also betting a bunch of other hands that you aren't supposed to bet either. And you're just completely missing all this EV that you're just completely leaving on the table just because you maybe you're over bluffing this spot because you have a bunch of misconceptions because you've never dug deeper into the solve. And just the, the it's a criminal thing to do when you're looking at solves because many times, maybe in this situation, ace four spades isn't a, a very good combo to jam, but maybe if we didn't have all these air hands, all of a sudden ace four spades is a good hand to, hand to jam. And if you don't understand why the specific things are happening and how all of these hands come together and how the overall range is made up, you're going to end up completely ruining your strategy in tons of different places. And so it's going to be very important to one, start to understand the actual principles behind why your hand is doing what it's doing. Where is the EV of your hand coming from? Why are certain frequencies being taken? And why is this hand a 30% frequency and this hand's a 90% frequency? There's a reason. The solver chose that hand at higher frequency for a very specific reason, and you have to figure it out. And one of the best parts about learning theory is that you don't have to memorize a lot of different things. Many times you can just know what the strategy is intuitively once you have understood tons of theoretical principles. Once you understand why each hand is doing what it's doing, all of a sudden you can take a similar spot because you understand all the principles of a spot that you studied earlier. You can take a completely different spot, apply some of those same principles and see, okay, this principle may apply here, but maybe this principle doesn't. And so I'm going to adjust like this. And as you go through your entire career, your overall intuition just gets better and better and better. And you're able to make these really well thought out, educated guesses while you're playing in a hand with only a 15 second or 20 second time bank. 
and you're much closer you just get closer and closer to gto but you never get there if you're only looking at the solve as an answer key you're just never going to get to a place where you can intuitively tell someone oh this hand bets 60 percent of the time and these are the reasons why you'll never be able to get there unless you start actually analyzing these solves in a really in-depth way and so i think it would have been very easy for me to just kind of go through this hand and be like oh I should have probably just checked the river here. What a punt. I'm not good. Okay, let's move on and go play again. But I would have missed a lot of EV that I could have gained. And this is why I'm showing this hand and why I'm trying to relay this information to you guys as well, because this is one of the things that has helped me learn poker in 2021. Like 2021, basically everyone is studying solves and you have to be better theoretically than them especially if you want to move up to stakes that are respectable and you are going to be able to make a high amount of uh, a very high hourly. But I appreciate everyone watching this video. Hopefully some of the end rant that I had is helpful to you guys. And if you have any questions, leave a comment or join the GTO Wizard Discord and at me if you have any questions as well. And I will try to respond to any comments that you leave. I appreciate you guys watching this and I'll see you soon.